Welcome to Series 33, everyone. Uh, we are sorry it's taken a bit longer than normal to release this episode. Uh, life has been quite a lot this last week, so hopefully this next week is less hectic in order to give us time to put the episode out at our normal time. But before we get to this episode, and to not have you wait much longer, let's get to some announcements first. First up, if you are listening to this in the U.S. on the day we're releasing, before 8 p.m., <laughs> you may still have time to get out and vote if you haven't yet. If it's the case, feel free to stop listening right now. Get out there to vote if possible. This is such an important election. Mm -hmm. If it's too late, however, hopefully your day is going well. You can ignore this first announcement. Also, if you early voted, if you're like me and you're extremely tired of getting all of these texts saying, <laughs> can we trust you to vote? And I'm like, I did it a month ago. Yeah. Um, uh, also, hello to everyone in the future. I hope that it's brighter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, please, please. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, next up, uh, I'm actually very excited to be diving into my campaign uh, for A Tale of Twinkle and Awe. Uh, it's going to be myself and five players running a solar punk story uh, using the Chimera RPG system. Uh, we're going to be blending superheroes, magical girls, and fantasy genres. Uh, we just finished our session zero this last Friday. Uh, and we're going to be doing our first session on November 13th, which is also Friday. Um, so I really wish we would have been able to get some spooky content put together, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a very hope punk filled world that we're building. So, uh, it, it should be a lot of fun. Um, you could also check out, uh, Amor Amores. Uh, they are doing a, uh, live stream campaign, uh, in the Fridays between my sessions. Uh, you can find them on the Utopia channel. Uh, they're doing a blend of superheroes and fantasy. Um, and their next session is this Friday, November 6th at 8 p.m. So uh, check them out at capeandblade.chimera.games and check mine out at twitch.chimera.games. Finally, uh, we're both on the verge of burnout lately, as uh -huh. I think so many people are. Yep. I think this is not a unique situation um, with the state of the world in all aspects of life and also some other things that we have going on. Um, hey, everyone, it's depression season for <laughs> Amelia. Oh, um, no. <laughs> we're both feeling a little rough around the edges. We are trying to find ways to mitigate that for the sake of our health, because ultimately, if we're not healthy, we can't make the show at all. So mm -hmm. um we're, we're doing our best here. It means we have to make some sacrifices here and there from time to time. Um, we really wanted to be able to do a panel for a Catacon line. Um, it's coming up this weekend. I know there are lots of great games and panels and things happening. Um, we really wanted to do it. Unfortunately, we're just not going to be able to. We didn't even get our stuff submitted. Yeah. Um, we're just like don't have the spoons to be charismatic and fun. So um, I really hope that those of you attending have a really great time. I'm really sorry that we're not able to do this. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, I, I opened the form. I started filling out a couple things. And then my brain was like, uh, forms? No, thank you. And, <laughs> and I just never ba got back to it. So Yeah, uh, and I totally forgot that it was like... I've been saying this to everybody and everybody at work has been saying it too, that like, I don't know where October went. Yep. Um, it's got 31 days. You think it would have lasted right? longer. Right. So I, I think that that just kind of flew right past and mm -hmm. I didn't even think about it until I was like, oh no, <laughs> that's like three days <laughs> oh, <no>. away. <laughs> Shoot. So close. Yep. <laughs> Darn it. Well, it is what it is. Uh, life is, is weird right now, but you know, um, I think we'll get through it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's really what we're saying is take care of yourselves, you know, uh, know your limits and, and try not to burn yourselves out as well. I, I think we'll get through this all together, uh, one step at a time, but, uh, if things do go awry, we will keep you posted. Um, and we'll keep working to, uh, bring a little bit of joy, uh, through these, uh, trying times. Yeah. Hopefully. I mean, I know that we're already putting out less content than we 
than we want to. Um, mm -hmm. But hopefully the stuff we're putting out is a, a good distraction and like a nice welcome reprieve. <laughs> Absolutely. Get, um, you, get you nice and relaxed. Yeah. Without further delay, uh, let's get on with this episode, which honestly is one of my favorites that we've ever recorded. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really fun. There. Yeah, definitely enjoy. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and this episode, my co-host Amelia and I are excited to welcome back Grant Howitt and Chris Taylor, designers of the game we are covering today, Unbound, a universal world-building game from Rowan, Rook, and Deckard. Welcome back to Character Creation Cast. We are super excited that you could join us again. We have another Kickstarter. I know. <laughs> I love getting those messages from you like, hey, we have a Kickstarter coming up. <laughs> hey, do you want some hashtag content? Oh, we would love hashtag content. Please, um, we have you are now again? our most frequent guest on this show. Oh, yeah. So uh, yeah. you have yeah, beat out... That. You have beat out Rich Howard for his t-shirt that he wants to win so badly. So. Sorry, I expect some sort of medal. Right? Yeah. I believe the rule is once you've been on seven times, then you can get a free t-shirt. Oh, well, so. We've got to, we've got to, we've got to, we've got to like, get more Kickstarters going, haven't we, Chris? Yeah, yeah. yeah. right we'll more games. Come on. Well, we're going yeah, for a yeah, while. So. Yeah, I'm not really doing that many games. <laughs> no. <laughs> that catalog's well, lacking. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and reintroduce you to everybody. Chris, can you tell us where we can find you, what kind of projects you're working on, all that kind of stuff? Uh, my name is Chris Taylor. Um, I'm probably best known for writing Spire, the expansions, and Heart, the most recent one. And I help Grant with his one pages every month. And I'm the Deckard part of Rowan, Rook, and Deckard. Hmm. How about yourself, Grant? Uh, I'm the Rook part of Rowan, Rook, and Deckard. The third part is uh, my partner and Chris's business partner, Mary. Um, who it's is It's very who's complicated. Yes. Well, we just we we just thought we'd, we'd like we'd pick cool names, like we we'd, we'd use our character names rather than our real names because that that way we might sound more like a law firm. Uh, but yes, um, I write I write role playing games. I write one page role playing games. One a month. I also do more than one page role playing games with Chris. Um, I like to I like to think of myself as a sort of fiery uh, Yang to Chris's somber yin uh, <laughs> as he just slaps the bad ideas out of my mouth several yeah. times a day. Yeah. Um, Try and keep uh, these things at least vaguely cogent. Yeah, you, sm <laughs> you smack the chaff away mm -hmm. and what we're left with delicious game design week. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at GS Howitt. Well, let's go ahead and get started on this. I'm super excited. This game is like you reached out and I was like, this game is exactly Ryan's kind of trash. <laughs> like this is this game was Tra made for trash. Ryan. Trash. Oh, well, trash. It, it will be once we've touched it. I promise no, you that. <laughs> no, this game is like exactly a Ryan kind of game. I mm -hmm. sent him the link to the, the page on your website, too. And he went, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> gimme, gimme. Yes. What's in a game? Yeah, well, we released Unbound four years ago now, I think. About that, yeah. And, and forgot to print any extra copies. Oops. Because oh. uh, we were new and young and fresh and didn't understand what was going on. The world hadn't uh, crushed us yet. No. Well... <laughs> it had begun its slow press. Yeah, I think like it had begun the process. Like, definitely could hear the... <laughs> of the big crusher coming down. Uh, but we're not dead yet in the industrial crushing machine of the world, and so we're going to do a reprint of it. We've also done a redesign. Uh, Mina McJanda, who did Lancer and uh, Void Heart Symphony and Legacy and all mm. sorts of stuff, uh, has done the has done all the uh, redesign on it. We've tightened up all the wording. Um, but that's that's all rather unexciting. Chris, what is Unbound? What does it do? It's a uh, it. So Unbound is the best session zero you're ever going to have because you build a, a really exciting world together. Like you shape the classes, the world, everything that happens in it. 
And then you get to play that and see what happens, generally over fairly short games. And then you see the entire world again from another perspective as you can play over and over within that world and change how everything reacts. So mm -hmm. in the play tests, we had one group play the previous group's children in the next part of the campaign. Oh. And, and things like that. They, they're built together in something called a saga. So you do about six games um, and then start a new campaign in that world. Oh, that's very cool. So it's, it, it's, look, it's, it's generic, and that's not a very sexy word, but it's generic in as much as it emulates a genre, and that genre is punch. <laughs> it is very it's much a, a pulp game. <laughs> it's pulpy. It does, it does a lot of, um, it skews towards sci fantasy, we've found, and I'm not quite sure why. Hmm. But, uh, but generally, it is, it's like lots of big, over the top, cinematic combat. Um, but also, we've sort of, we've, we were playing a lot of Secret World at the time, like a shed load of Secret World. And so the combat system is, is an MMO combat system. Hmm. But not in a not in a people will say bad things about it fourth ed style. <laughs> no one's heard of it style. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna ask the actual questions on our sheet now. Oh, yeah. Cool. Because um, I did I did write these for a reason. <laughs> Usually we start with talking about the setting of a game, but this one doesn't have a setting. I want to ask why did you choose to make a generic setting neutral collaborative world building game? Like those are a thing now. I feel like. Mm. Um, I mean, Genesis and I've seen a lot of other kind of like mm -hmm. sort of setting neutral games recently, but this was from a few years ago before it was the sexy thing to do other than very, GURPS, which we know, hipster. we know you love. Um, why? It's so sexy. It's, it is. It is. I <laughs> oh, believe one of my Gips favorite is like quotes. Honey running down a naked back. <laughs> see, one of my favorite quotes is from one of our recordings with you where you said GURPS is for people who fetishize calculators. Yeah, that's what it is. Like, it's sick. that's fine. It's perverse. <laughs> what you do in the privacy of your own home is fine. I'm, I'm not going to judge that. But I mean, bring even it to my house. Like <laughs> uh, so, uh, Chris, uh, I think Chris will agree. And there's two answers to this. Uh, which one, which is fear, and the other, which is madness. Yeah, honestly. Which one do you want? Um, I'll take madness. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so Grant and I were going mad. Um, we were both <laughs> suffering from depression. We were both in different countries and we needed something to do. Honestly, like literally yeah. like some, like something collaborative that we could do. And so mm. it got to the point of like, we were both out of work at the time as well. Yeah. So should we just, should we write a game? Yeah, let's write a game. Like just, just mucking about, just putting mm. some words together. And then it started to get really exciting and really good. Hmm. Like, like impressively good, considering that we'd tried, that we were literally just throwing words at a page and just doing whatever we thought was fun at the, at the time. Mm. And it turned into Unbound and it got out of hand, honestly, and kind of kind yeah. of started our career, really. Mm. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Definitely started the, our company. The, the fear answer was because uh, up until I went to a... <laughs> I went to a writer's, a uh, creative's retreat in the jungles of Costa Rica... In, uh, in summer 2016, I uh, had a drug field experience staring directly into a bonfire, burning my fears. And then on the way back from that, I, I was like, oh, I could put a setting in a game. And I didn't, I was too scared to put settings in games before. Um, hmm. Or to, or like, it, was, it felt a bit like being, uh, I think I've talked about this on the show before, but like being trapped with someone and they're talking about their 12th level paladin. Uh, okay. And... And like and, and and like, well, I had this character in the game. It was really cool, and he rolled the dice, and he did. He did eighteen damage. Mm. And uh, okay, your and game was like, fun for you because you were there. I don't mm -hmm. want to hear about it. It's an experiential thing. Like, exactly. it, I don't care. I'm mm -hmm. glad you had a great time. I don't what care. You're, what you're telling me is a lie about a person who doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> I say on a show where we create characters and make people listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're free to leave any time. It's true. I'm not putting this in your ears. You downloaded this of your own free will. <laughs> and we'd love you for it. I think there was there was some fear there about actually putting a setting in a game. So like Goblin Quest, the thing which which I put out beforehand, is very loose. It has like setting tables and it has like, like paragraphs here and there and drawings. But it really isn't like, okay, here's what's going on. Um, and we didn't like it was like the next book we published was Spire, which of course I've been on the show for before, and which is mostly setting. Even the mechanics are setting. Mm -hmm. And 
so Unbound was us. Uh, Unbound. I, I think the reason why we ended up with a with, with Universal game, uh, a, a, a generic game, was because we were. I, I was scared of putting a setting in, uh, and because we started doing a dungeon, like Dungeons and Dragons game, and the things sort of spiraled out from there. Hmm. We had sailors in it at one point. One of the classes was sailor. It was. It was they just got a boat. That was their entire yeah. class. Hmm. I mean, what more do you need? You can see the dreck we cut. This is a quite a bit of me. <laughs> oh, this is why you're the game designer and oh. I'm not. I mean, to be fair, they made it into Spire. If yeah, you're a yes. Spire, you can get a boat. So. Yeah, that is one of the upgrades. Mm-hmm. I believe I picked one for my yep. character. Um, so yes, we did that. Um, and it's, it's, it's very hard to sell a generic game mm-hmm. or a world creation game because... Um, because almost all RPG sales go through Kickstarter now. You have to sell people the concept of a game, the concept mm-hmm. of a great session. And when people ask, what's the game about? What sort of stories can we tell? You have to go, oh, well, anything. Because well, what do you want? Just tell, me yeah. what you, just tell me what you want, and then <laughs> I'll give it to you. Just tell me. <laughs> we'll, we'll do a little dance. Can we have some money? <laughs> and, and it was, yeah, it was, it was it was a real challenge to sell, and so we really struggled to. Um, well, we did okay on Kickstarter, uh, but it was it was a real struggle to um, to get it to get it in to get to get people's get to catch people's attention with it. And I think now that we've got we've got a much better understanding of, after four years of selling games, that the text of the book hasn't hasn't changed significantly, but we're able to say, oh, actually, here's what you can do with it, and we're a lot more confident about it now. Mm, very cool. All right. So then, what do we need to play Unbound? Cards. Yeah, you need a little bit more to play than perhaps a, a gen, an, another generic game. Um, you need a copy of the book because you need the rules in your classes. Um, mm. But each player and the GM included needs their own deck of cards that they're going to be using throughout the game, which will be ruined. By it the will way. be will be ruined. You are going to write on the cards. <laughs> uh, because it is both the, the deck, that deck is both your your random number generator and your character sheet and your hit points and your hit points and everything it is oh, all boy. it is all in one deck of cards so buy yourself a cheap deck of cards with a lot of space on them and a good sharpie mm-hmm. um, and and you're away you don't need dice you don't need anything else so my my 22 year old pristine Sailor Moon uh, branded cards probably uh, shouldn't be used for this yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, you've made a poor choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we could do a Sailor Moon style cam- uh, game. We, I, we could do a magical transforming girls game. You know, I have zero problems with that. <laughs> well, let's, 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 just, let's, let's, let's keep that in the back of our mind as, as, as we go forward because it is possible to do magical transforming girls very easily in Unbound. Okay. I want well, this game even more now. I, I mean, I feel like Ryan was already sold on this. But. <laughs> you don't have to sell me more. He can single-handedly back this Kickstarter at this point. <laughs> oh, he, have a special he doesn't Ryan need that new house he was going to buy. He can no, just no, 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 no. We've got a series of beautiful dresses and bright lights. Yeah, I can live on the street for a little. It's fine. <laughs> can you, can you want a lazy Susan? Have you spin around? <laughs> While you get changed. There you go. <laughs> um... You mentioned a little bit that this game does sci-fi and fantasy and punching. Um, mm. What kind of stories and themes do you want people to explore <laughs> in this game? Enough. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what more do you need? So th- when you're talking about like what's, what stories do people explore, like it's really hard because in playtesting, we've had everything from a sort of hard-bitten, gritty Mad Max game. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, some of our playtesters were whales. They were mm-hmm. eco-terrorist whales. Yeah, like you do. Um, yeah. Our personal playtest was we were wizards on a school trip being sent away to collect the insurance on them when they crashed the van. Um, it tells all sorts of different stories, but the point is, is whatever story it is, it has high action. Mm. Um, yeah, it has it has combat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it needs to be something bombastic and over the top. Um, you're, this is not a game for like a, a Veronica Mars level investigation. No. Uh, your class is 99% combat based. Um, it, the idea is that combat is snappy, fun, and interesting, mm. and mm. everything just kind of falls out of whatever you want it to be. Mm. Um, so as long as you like punching stuff, you're all right. Yeah, I, I, I think as well, like, considering that the like the dramatic scenes and combat scenes, uh, battle scenes, sorry, are, are mechanically very different from one another. And so, like, 
it lends itself to uh, well, honestly, like magical transforming girls. Anything where there's like there's like there's a hard break where now it's time for combat. So like mech games are quite popular. Uh, mm-hmm. We had a game. We had a game of Unbound, um, which became a one pager, uh, which were, we were all um, Regency ladies. Uh, we were about we were between the ages of fourteen and nineteen, uh, getting ready to be married, and of course we were being trained in the proper art of giant robot combat. Oh. And so we had we had our own sort of big robots, and we had to take them to war against the French. Oh, that sounds amazing! Um, so yeah, like, uh, action stories, very much so. I okay, think. so this is kind of similar. What do characters do in this game? Uh, action. action, yeah, <laughs> action, punching, punching. Yeah, like uh, the, well, it's very difficult. Also kicking. You also kicking yeah, or slicing yeah. or whatever you fancy. Yeah, but it's, it's kind awesome. of difficult to to say what characters do because of the fact that you build the entire world and the game in mm. session zero. It is literally that thing of whatever you want. So if you want to tell a story about um, people defending their homeland, that sure you can do that as long as they're doing it with violence in some fashion at mm. least. Um, if you want to tell about spaceship battles and the bleakness and isolation of space. Cool. Do that alongside spaceship flights. It's all about the world you build. We don't have any scale. It's, there's, it's a big challenge in writing as well, but the scale is a character makes an attack and your attack can be cool. I, um, I send forward a legion. Like it's, it's all very, it's, it's all quite abstract on the mechanical level, but I think the, like what, what characters do um, is all, is all key to the experience. Mm. Uh, okay to the advancement mechanic and the way which advancement works is you come up with we call them fates uh but the like the preferred name is um scenes we'd like to see from uh-huh. whose line is it anyway mm-hmm. but the, but like a fate is something which will happen to your character and so it you can think of it like a like a character goal but more often we'd much rather have it like i get in an argument with my ex-husband could be a could be a character goal and then you come up with one, and the rest of the group comes up with one, and when you do both of them, you advance. Okay. So what characters do is really, really um, dictated by the group, and advancement too is dictated by the group. So you end up with this like really super focused game, but also has a, also has a really nice uh, mechanic for for side stories because if it, like in terms of relationships, in terms of non combat stuff, like most of the fates we have aren't about combat. There, like the combat's there as an exciting thing to do, and then the fates sit alongside that. And because, because a bit like in Apocalypse World, where people pick out a stat they want you to use, in this, the rest of the table says, "Okay, here's what we want to see your character doing," mm-hmm. and that means that they're infused and excited when it's happening. Generally, yeah, okay, but yeah, anything you can see why it's hard to sell. Yeah, That's- like I mean, one of the fates that I've I've seen a character have in playtesting is I want to die. Mm. Like they wanted a scene where they die. And that's part of their advancement mechanic. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, like, they already know they're going to come back, but it's a scene Mm. in which that character experiences death in some fashion. Mm. See, the weird part of me wants to push this to the limit and do, like, uh, microscopic tardigrade magical girls. 100%. Uh, It'll it'll handle that. But uh, but I I love that it can handle that. Right. Yeah. It's it just like I think like the drama uh, uh, at, at microscopic level is hard for us to imagine. <laughs> yeah. Being the conversation like, is bland. Yeah. Uh, but you, but but you, you got six like legs. legs. Yeah. It's yeah, nice. Talk about each one of your six legs. <laughs> <laughs> it it could do tardigrades. I think that it might be hard to tell a story about tardigrades regardless of system, but hopefully you can make it work. Yeah. yeah. If as long as they're sentient enough. Yeah. You're yeah. Okay, you have to be sentient. Oh, plus yeah. they're magical. We're fine. Yeah, mm. it's all oh, good. Yeah, they, yeah, they can covers- just get bigger and go to like a malt shop or something. Yeah, it covers all the bases. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that has come up now several times in this recording and before when we've talked about this game um, is that it's it's difficult to like sell people on it. So I'm going to ask you now, what is unique? What makes this special? Why sh- Why should I buy this game that's actually like make up your own game? <laughs> they hear you do the work. <laughs> throwing the hardballs here. <laughs> the reason why you should buy it, as Chris said earlier, it's the best session series you'll ever have, and we don't say that lightly. Um, we've really tried to make something which feels special and engaging and exciting. And like the thing, it's not, it's not like Genesis. Mm-hmm. It's not like um, what's the other one? What's the Monty Cook one? Cipher. Uh, Cipher, Cipher system. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's not like Cipher in as much as. Those are really good if you know, like, oh, I want a cyberpunk game. 
So mm -hmm. you're going to take that and then take the bits of the world that work together and then write your own bits and sort of have that. But there's modules and various things you can work out. You're not supposed to have an idea in mind for a setting when you come to this game. Everyone turns up and pitches it together. And it's that collaboration, which I've not seen outside of something like Microscope or mm -hmm. like some really broad journalist games, like A Quiet Year as well. Mm -hmm. Um of these really broad journalist games, you have the capacity to have that collaboration. And we've not seen anything that does it like this in a more focused, traditional RPG style. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, neither of those are particularly punchy games. No, they're, 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 they're kind of introspective and somber. Uh, I don't mean somber as in sad, but like they're slower and they're, hmm. th th they're exploring themes, whereas this is more like, well, I am going to batter you to death with a spaceship. <laughs> like I'm going to use it like a baseball bat and hit you with it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's the thing, right? Like when you sit down with your friends, you're going to sit down and have zero clue what you're going to play that evening. And you will walk away with an amazing setting that you are exciting and raving to play in. Mm. And yeah, then you yeah. get to do that. And then you get to break that setting while you're in it. Because you're, as I say, as I said earlier, you're looking at maybe six games with the characters mm. you currently got. And then you kind of zoom out a little bit if you want to. Just just look at your world of the whole and go, cool. So we've changed the world. We've waged war on this country, let's say. We were doing a military campaign. Let's play the next one during that time period, but as the people we invaded. Mm -hmm. Let's see how that happens. Let's see what happens to the druids in this forest over here, because obviously war burns forests, war mm. has industry and all sorts of dangerous things going on. What was their look at this world? Or what was this like 10,000 years ago, 10,000 years in the future, what if everything's flooded? Mm. And you can just throw all this stuff at it and it'll stick mm. because the scale is changeable because you can do magical girl tardigrades or you can beat somebody to death with a spaceship. Mm -hmm. You just change the scale and it doesn't matter to the rules what the scale is. Yeah. Nice. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Yeah. <laughs> I will warn so you, excited. one of the worst things about um, doing the, the Session Zero is if you then don't play the game afterwards. Oh, yeah. Because you've got this this bundle of potential. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that's, that's the perfect state of a role play. Oh, that's why one, I love this podcast. That's, I mean, that's what we're here for is, like, we never have to, like, suffer the consequences of any no. of the decisions we've get, made. But, like, every time I do it, I want to get mucky in that setting, right? No, like, no, I want to be no, up to no, my no. knees in it. <laughs> We there are two types of dirty, people, apparently. We have to dirty these perfect characters with, with like, role-playing. <laughs> <Damn. sighs> uh, mechanics? No, thank you, sir. I mean, technically, uh, I'm that's doing where some, our fan faction is for. Yeah, I'm doing some world-building with one of my friends right now for a game that we plan on playing. And oh, cool. um, the whole time, we're like... Okay, but what point do we stop? And we're like, okay, now we have to have game. Like, at what point do, are we like, okay, we can't keep like making all of these decisions. We have to sit down and play in it. And we're like, mm. Mm, maybe next week. <laughs> do we? Yeah. Maybe we'll just keep talking about it instead. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, the history of Unbound, uh, it it was originally released in 2016. Um, what else can you uh, tell us about the history of this game? Was so we, what, we started. Much covered it. Yeah, I mean, we started it with with a Kickstarter, uh, mm. which funded fairly well. I mean, we were fairly unknown at that point. Did all right, yeah. Um, and it funded two expansions, uh, Cyberpunk mm. and Urban Horror, Ooh. both of which have now been rolled into the book. So they're just mm. they're just standard. They're an appendices in the book now. Um, and all they add to the game is, um, as we'll see later, they add extra traits to the game. Um, okay. And a load of new monster hierarchies and just some some extra little bits that plug into mm -hmm. the game. Um, you can use them or not use them, depending on what's going on. Um, and then we've had pro fairly regularly since 2016, people going, yeah, where can I buy Unbound from? I want a, I want a physical one, not a PDF. And we're like, well, we'll, get, we'll sort it. We've got other projects. We're doing Spy. We're doing Heart. This is happening. And it kind of got to this point where, like, actually, we should just do a really, like, simple, cheap Kickstarter. Just, like, mm -hmm. if like almost like a pre-order, right? Like, mm -hmm. we're funding the print run. We're not doing stretch goals. We're not adding to the book. We're not making it – we're not doing anything that could extend the release time. As soon as the Kickstarter finishes, we press buy on as many books as we need, plus some. And then as soon as they're printed, they go out. Mm. And that's that's really – Really exciting because it means that we like hopefully we can get these into people's hands within months rather than 
an extended there's less things of time. to go wrong when you don't have like mm. i watch some kickstarters and they have stretch goal upon stretch goal upon stretch goal and i'm like that's a delay and a delay and yeah, a delay and, and, like, and they're very cool in. things but i'm like yeah. i'm not gonna get this book for three years no, like, like, <laughs> everything in this book was written four years ago we've tightened it we've made it prettier uh mina majanda's done wonderful stuff laying it out so it's actually really passable now because there's, there's a fair amount of information in the book and we were guessing at that point honestly as to what was good and what wasn't and now we actually know so it's it's all fixed on that front but other than that nice. it's there and that brings up to now oh it's lovely all right well let's jump into like the actual like nitty gritty details what terms and stuff do we need to know before we start playing this game or should we should we take these in turns Chris and I read down the list sure okay so the first and and like the most important um campaign thing which you'll pick is the core and the core of your character so your character is built up of three parts and we'll get on to what, what they are in a bit uh but cores are the we have like warrior magi de, uh was it zealot de, 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 devout what's it called devout thank you um Out, pact bound outlaw and outlaw these are these are kind of the group concepts for your for your group they'll give you they'll ask they'll they'll ask some questions about the setting and then they'll also give you a recovery power, which is how you heal. And so, like, the outlaw one lets you hurt people and run away, and the magi one lets you sort of summon magic shields and stuff. Uh, and then, Chris, roll. Uh, the rolls are the things most easily identifiable as classes. Uh, you're looking at protector, warden, striker, deadeye. Like, they're these iconic roles that are filled by groups in RPGs. So the striker, as you can imagine, is a, a close-up damage dealer. The dead eye is a ranged character. The protector heals and the warden defends. Um, and they give you the, 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 the real basics of your class, of, of your character. So they tell you what your, um, how good you are at hitting things. They tell you how healthy you are. They give you a couple of basic powers. And then you modify those with the traits. And traits are, we've got uh, 10 to 12. Some, we, we, have, we have quite a few in the book. And these are your character's trick, your character's quirk. So they're things like fire or um, spirits or shadows or mighty. And they, they generally inform your character's style and you get a power and a question out of those as well. And so from those, like depending on what you pick in terms of traits, it can really change the scope of the campaign in terms of like, well, okay, where I've got shadow and spirit and transform as opposed to a game which has mighty and dirty fighting and fire. Hmm. And so you can, you can, but you can tell the GM what you're interested in and then the questions will sculpt the game. Yeah. I'm not sure what path uh, is. <laughs> that's not in the game. Foundation is though. Um, uh, I can't try to remember what foundation is. Uh, so skills. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the foundation is uh, a sort of skill set bundle, basically. Um, it tells you your out of combat abilities and kind of how you interact with the world at a base level. Um, it's not used as much as the previous ones because the previous ones are combat based. Mm. Um, but it's still uh, an important, like, focusing point of your character. It's very similar to aspects in fate. Yeah. Or um, backgrounds in 13th Age. Uh, next up, we've got fates, which, as we discussed earlier, fates are the scenes we'd like to see, which will advance your character, and we'll, we'll pick some out for each other to see what we're excited than doing. Uh, and then you've got factions and twists, which is uh, a thing for the GM to worry about, basically. Um, during the world creation, the GM will be listening to what everybody's saying, and after they've all helped build the world, and kind of name a couple of the factions as being very important. Like, actually, I can work with this horrible Zaibatsu company in this cyberpunk world we've made. Let's look at them specifically. Let's work out who their figurehead is. Um, and twists are things that they choose early to be able to affect battlefields and change the game rules a little bit. Uh, and then scars are permanent injuries you pick up on your on your cards. Scars are uh, you will like if when you go out of action you draw a card and you write a scar on it and that lessens the value of the card. Uh, and then if you scar a scar you die, which is exciting. Oh, ooh, yeah, ooh. that is that is the death mechanic. Um, yeah. And the last one we've got here is a saga. A saga is simply a micro campaign, basically. 
Um, mm. If you imagine a Dungeons & Dragons campaign in the traditional mold is like a years long thing. It's very expensive. You take characters from one to 20. Well, imagine that a saga is levels one to three. Mm -hmm. And then after you've done that, you basically throw those characters away and get some new ones. And then, as I said earlier, you play those in the same world and you modify your world a little bit. Wait, no, no. Adventure is that. Saga is everything plugged together. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes, it is. It's been it's been a while since we wrote it. Yeah. Either way, it's 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 about the campaigns and the and the breaking up of that and shifting through the different characters. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very cool. Uh, is that everything we need to know then before we dive in? I yes, so. honestly, it is. I will say uh, for this for this episode, I will be I'll be taking the GM role. Okay. Um, All right. So I won't be making a character, but I'll be doing the world creation stuff as well. Most of that will be handled from. Sorry, I'll be steering the world creation, but you'll be doing most of it yourselves. I mean, you can build a character too if you really want. Nice, no, honestly, it's it's, uh, it's it helps if there's a GM. Okay, around. All right. it helps having someone to steer the process. So. I don't know if you're the person we want to leave in charge, though. <laughs> 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 All right, well, let's make some people. All right, let's make some people and a world. Let's make a place. Oh, yeah, and a world. Crucially. All right, what do we do first? Do we do people first or a world first? The first thing we do is touchstones. We actually we we have a um we have a, a reference for this. So uh, while you're funding reference, Grant. Um, um thank you. So you say that like do we make people first or do we make the world first? Or you do them both simultaneously. Ooh. As you pick it's, it's world first. Well, you have to do both simultaneously. Okay, cool. Because, <laughs> you have to. because each class, uh, each, sorry, each um, role, core, trait, all of these things have questions attached to them. Mm-hmm. So you have to be able to answer those questions to fill out a little bit more of the world. So you, you kind of work out what the world is, like the broad strokes, and then as you go through, you drill deeper and deeper and deeper through the process. First thing I'd like you to do is turn to page uh, 20 of your PDFs. We hope we all have the same version together. And then, what, what, what we're going to do, we're all going to draw a card. And so, uh, page 20 is the touchstones. The touchstones are 52 different phrases, which we thought would be useful to help generate an original world. Uh, you, you, what we're going to do, we're going to do this three times. So each time, I want you to draw a card, tell me what you get, and then I'll write it down. And then of those three groupings of words, we're going to pick out the ones with the one which is calling to us most. Okay. Uh, I got demons. Demons. I got jungles. Let's see. I will pull a card. Uh, jungles. Draw again. I drew that one. Okay. Ooh. Fine. <laughs> uh, let's see. Holy. Holy. And uh, Ryan. And I got walls. Walls. Demon. Jungles. Demons. Jungles. Holy walls. Mm. Uh, so there's something there. There's, 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 yeah, that's there's definitely not something. I can think of some few things in that. Okay, again. 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 Oh, we got to draw a second one, huh? Uh, so, so as I said, we're going to do three groups of these. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to see which one's calling out to us to make a campaign I out like of. it. Prison. Prison. I got Sky, so that's already exciting. Yep. I got Pirates. Oh, here we go. <gasps> and, oh, and, I got, and I got Corporations. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Prison, Corporation, this. Sky Pirates? Oh, that's pretty good. We we stole the flying jail. <laughs> uh, and one more. Narcotics. Wizards. Here we go. Demons. Yes. Wizards, narcotics, demons, and I got beasts. So the three we have to play with, and I will say we can also append all of these with and, and magical girls. If that's, if that's something which we want, I will say I would like. I'm fine if Ryan plays a magical girl. I'm also, but but I'm also fine if all of us play magical girls. Here's the thing: I yeah. know nothing about the magical girl genre. Me neither. I've seen three episodes of Card Captor Sakura. I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. I know that there's like outfits are important. Yeah, you spin around and change, and then you fight evil. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's a wand or something. There you go. Um. So the three concepts we have are demons, jungles, holy, and walls. Sky, prison, pirates, corporations, and demons, wizards, narcotics, narcotics, and beasts. What are we feeling? I'm really feeling this sky pirate corporation prison right. thing. Yeah. It's, it's got to be that. It's, I mean, it feels so good. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, yeah, like a big sort of yeah. shanty jail. Right, yeah, cool, okay, all right. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Demons, Jungles, Holy Walls. Well, that would have been, been fun. A, you would have made a fine film starring Paul Bettany, but not for Dow. <laughs> so, what we have here is, uh, what we're going to do now is pick a core. Um, uh, you can, we can also pick the pick sort of the core, like the base setting, whether it's fantasy, sci-fi, or urban horror, pulp, or superheroes. Those are the only kinds of role-playing games there are. <laughs> but um, you can, but I, I, I think I'd like to leave that slightly open, and we can work out where we are in it, and we can sort of leave the leave the overall what's the word time period, as it were, and magic use uh, to a little bit later. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to do after that is pick cores. Now, what cores are, are as we said earlier, the um, the party concept, as it were, the group concept. Mm-hmm. And the ones we have to pick from are devout, people of faith who bring light to dark places. And that can be faith in the system or faith in a philosophy. It doesn't have to be a, uh, a religious faith. Magi, experts on a, qu- on a quest for hidden knowledge. Your default D&D wizard is a magi, so is Indiana Jones. Uh, outlaw, rogues fighting against the system. Pact bound, who are agents in service to an otherworldly power. So think like warlocks or angel summoners or um, like really weird urban horror stuff. Warrior, military operatives in active conflict. Now, to say military, it could also be paramilitary, uh, but generally um, a, a battle for territory or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then wild, defenders of the natural places of the world, your druids, your eco-warriors, your whales, etc. I will say playing wild does allow you to play six wolves. <laughs> if you want to play six wolves. Uh, so those are, those are the cores. Chris, are you, are you got any ideas? Well, the most obvious one would be outlaw. Mm. Um, because we're in a world with pirates and I don't really fancy playing as the corporations. Mm. Um, so that would be kind of neat. But we could also be um, warriors mm. in, using the sort of pirate ethos of fighting back against corporations who are taking up our airspace. Like, like, like a, like a proper, like this is, this is it. We're, we're, we're clawing back. Yeah, like, like uh, Vive la Resistance, rather than. Mm, okay. I'm going to rob mm. your shipping container. Yeah. So um, they're uh, not like the pirates are not the corporation. This is not Pirates Incorporated. I mean, it could be Pirate Incorporated. I'd like to. I mean, I'm just each, asking. Each pirate ship is perhaps its own legally like distinct business. <laughs> they've got, they've got all their paperwork in order. I quite, I quite like the idea that like people could buy stocks in your, in your pirate ship, and if you do well, they make more money. It's but see, but then you start having like pirate fantasy football. Sure, oh, that works. A lot of gambling. That, that, that's what D is. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it wrong. is, isn't it? That's <laughs> um, so uh, outlaw or warrior. I think those are those are those are both interesting takes. Mm-hmm. Amelia, anything? I mean, I think outlaw mm-hmm. works and well for me. Yeah, I think Outlaw could work. Um, yeah, I think Outlaw is probably the the one that makes the most sense. I think so. It, like Outlaw uh, focuses around a city. It focuses around like a, like a single location, whereas whereas Warriors Warriors bigger. But I quite like the idea of trying to steal the prison. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, and if so- you're if you're looking at a at a location, it can kind of be like I mean, if you look at like the area that pirates actually operated in, it was tiny. Mm. And you kind of have that mm-hmm. area of the Caribbean, but it's that area of the sky, I guess. If we've got airships, yeah, and uh, and then you could have like 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 very tall oil, oil very tall oil rigs or something, yeah. which you could sort of dock to or what have you, like space elevators. We can work with that. Okay, cool. So there's going to be a few questions to ask about outlaws. So the first thing you need to do is well, I so say that's going to be that's actually going to be, not be the first thing you should do. Here we are. Questions. Every player must answer. What is my crime? But what I'm going to ask you first is the GM and each player should answer the following questions about the world. What's the name of our city and what's weird about it? So it's a flying city. Mm. Yes. It's a flying area. But I like to imagine that's not the weird thing. Like most places fly here. Yeah. What's, what's unusual about the place that, that, that we find ourselves in? Is it Sky Jail? It's too heavy. It's like lower to the ground than all of the other ones. Oh, okay, and the ground is like gross and toxic. Yeah, yeah, that's quite nice actually. You can get a nice, yeah. nice sort of slum effect to it. Mm. Yeah, my thought was also like um, maybe it's tethered to a like 
encampment on the ground or a community on the ground for some reason. How about it's tethered to a uh, to a boat? So like not not like a, like a like a little rowboat, but like 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 a sort of like a like a destroyer or some sort of research vessel or some kind of this massive thing which is trudging through these acid seas, and it's the it's the it's, it's the sort of the connecting skyport of that. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That works, yeah, because then we can go up and down and. Mm-hmm. Are are they pumping this uh, toxic goo into uh, the city for research, and that's why we're lower? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I like the idea that, that there's there's like most of it is just gross toxic goo, but there's pockets of useful things, or like or like oh, there's this there's this horrible monstrosity which we're going to go and kill and capture, mm-hmm. and so that you sort of drag that back. What up. if it's got like um, other liquids in it, but with different visibilities? So like there's like liquid petroleum, essentially like whatever mm-hmm. whatever airship fuel is, but I'm guessing mm-hmm. it's like Leviathan blood or something. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That that. That's brilliant. There we go. And so you need something at, at at the toxic ground level to be able to get the fuel source to run the airships at livable levels. Mm. And everybody on the ground level all has like, I don't know what time period, what sort, sort of theme we're doing yet, but like hazmat suits. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm I'm getting um, I'm getting like alternate near future. I'm getting water world. Yeah, I don't want to get Waterworld. <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? I'm imagining Waterworld, but slight, like, but like, perhaps slightly sooner after the collapse. So there's still technology. There's still various yeah. other things which work, and there's still sort of echelons holding on, rather than just Kevin, Kevin the Crossner drinking his own. Yes, sorry, his own urine. <laughs> Uh, so, what's the name? So, you, you're there's there's this, this ship and this island, mm-hmm. and I like the idea that they both suck, <laughs> both terrible places. Mm-hmm. We need a we need a cool name, and this this is going to inform a lot of the rest of of, 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 what, of what we come up with. But like, it, I figure like it's got to be a go corporate on. name, right? See, I think it's something yeah. that like is like flowery and like utopian yeah something mm. like something like totally not totally incorrect yeah and like it has to have like ink. comma incorporated at the end of it absolutely right yeah, yeah. halcyon ink Ooh, that is very dramatic that is very dramatic it's also the like- uh, the main city in masks oh um, Halcyon City. Damn <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a good word masks. It's, it's, it's one of my top five words Providence. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Providence, and Providence and and, uh, and New Divence. Providence, which is the which is the flying yes. bit. Yes. Yeah, okay. Like, yeah, and so Providence Incorporated. That is a good title for a campaign. Mm-hmm. Providence Incorporated. Yeah, it's lovely. Okay. So aboard the SS Providence. The HMS? Uh HM, yeah, I don't know. Difficult. Whatever. The, well, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be Her Majesty. It would be her CEO. <laughs> <laughs> the COO. There we HCEO go. Providence. <laughs> <laughs> the ship is the CEO. Oh. Although, no. Okay. Um, what do we want? And what happens if we don't get it? So you're, you're outlaws. You're on the wrong side of the law. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to steal? Or kill? Or farm? So originally I had the idea that we were like actually like trying to rob all these different airships. Mm-hmm. But now I'm thinking what we're trying to rob is the fuel to keep everything afloat. Otherwise everything falls and sinks into the acid lakes. I reckon like you could try and steal new Providence. Mm-hmm. So like you could try and like cut it off from the ship area and take it off as its, as its own free colony. You could try and steal enough Leviathan blood to get to get an escape capsule out of there. Or are we trying to steal the stuff that they brought up and get it off the the Sky Island? Mm. Yeah, okay, that works for me. Like you like you've you found a buyer. You found someone who's willing to mm-hmm. to buy this ridiculously valuable Leviathan guts. Mm-hmm. I mean I feel like there's the option of like this is this corporation owned ship mm-hmm. and we don't want to be owned by a corporation anymore and we're just going to steal the whole ship yeah let's, let's, uh, yeah let's go big <laughs> yeah, like we've just made off with the entire thing so we just like, want to steal all of new providence you're gonna so they, they're gonna steal the you're gonna steal the entirety of the flying section of, of providence 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cut that off, jettison it, steal as much fuel as you can, and then brand new colony. Brilliant. Love it. Yeah. yeah. We're going to wait until wait until we have all the fuel that we can get, and then... Which is interesting, have- because that is... The, what, what we've done here is we've, we're kind of starting to establish the scale. So it feels like, like, rather than fighting, it might be I'm leading my unit of ten... Soldiers, I'm leading like my unit of ten rebels or ten thieves on this uh, in this area, rather than I'm here with my laser rifle. Mm-hmm. So we can we can scale up and down and have it as fairly large, like skirmish scale combat if we'd like. But we can work that out as we go. Um, so uh, what happens if you don't get it? I th- I think the corporation is going to run the city into the the acidic depths until all of the profitability is gone. Just like suck it dry. Yeah, I want I want something immediate. Oh, okay. I want I want like not not necessarily like like a ticking clock, but something which is like here are the stakes, folks. Yeah. Well, I mean, like since we're outlaws, we're all facing some form of incarceration or trial or something, right? Mm-hmm. Like like you've all been arrested. You're all wanted by the law. Yeah. Like I'm, what I'm kind of imagining is because these are very closed locations. Like, you need to dock with something else to go anywhere else. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking that there's a sort of system of IDs, and our IDs okay. have been flagged. Right, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily talking, like, you know, RFID chips in your hands, but even, like, right. badges, numbers, whatever. But you need... Our papers are not Our good. papers are bad now. They have been You're marked. Wanted. Yes. You can't operate. It's not like... My, like there's, there's big sort of, like, grainy black and white screens displaying your faces. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. enormous cathode ray wanted yeah. posters <laughs> uh, that's the stuff that's what I'm after I'm imagining like quite a quite a grimy level of technology as well like it's like it's it, it's all very functional I'm imagining like a lot of hazmat suits a lot of hazard warning a lot of rust mm-hmm. but like it all it all does its job but it's not slick and smooth and beautiful in, in, yeah. in my head like, it's kind of a really dirty 50s okay Mm. Like the, mm-hmm. that, that kind of radium oh, okay. tube television. Um, yeah, some retro future. Yeah. Fallout style. Yeah, very kind Fallout of, style, yes. feels yeah. like. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm imagining like Fallout maybe crossed with Brazil. So it's got that level of sort of that level of mad intensity and war and Yeah, that's the corporation things. stuff coming into it, right? Mm. Mm. But having, yeah, I, li- I like the idea that a lot of this technology is old and they're not entirely sure how it works. And so it's it's kind of, it's. It's legacy technology, as it were, yeah, which, but, which is being strung together with broken parts. But we can use that kind of that image. You know those images of like Blade Runner when they've got the enormous mm. screens. Like imagine that, but it's a CRT. Yeah, <laughs> like it's this colossal CRT thing taking up so oh much room. It's God. um, it's 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 four hundred um boxes you can change to white or black. Yeah, oh. <laughs> and you, you can you like can a, hear the hum. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. It's, no wonder Dying. this island is sinking. Yeah. <laughs> it's all just from these very heavy televisions. Yeah. I'm going to call this CRT punk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Okay. Um, who's in, and so what happens if you, if you don't get it is you'll be arrested. You'll be tracked down. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. um, like to imagine like that, that you've, you've all done something bad. And so, and, and, and so like now people are coming for you, mm-hmm. which happily answers the next question for me. Well, it asks the next question. Who's in charge of the law around these parts? It's got to be corporate security, right? Mm-hmm. What are yeah. they like? Hmm. So yeah, Fishman? I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if we go like the proper faceless corporation sort of style or mm-hmm. robots. I need an NPC. Robots I can talk. Least, yeah, I need at least two NPCs that I can put voices on. Yeah. Um, so robots, robots are in charge. What if it's what if it's robots with uh, with a small contingent of like uh, actual people that are oh, like uh, sort of decrepit programmers? Yeah. Oh, I like that. So like the robots have like a real basic like punch card level AI in them. Mm-hmm. Like they understand stuff. They can understand commands, like spoken commands and things. Yeah. But they're very like their hands are those clampy claws. They're not like yes. beautiful digits, um, and they, they they move in packs with proper handlers. And then you get the best of both worlds. You get the the robot and the the nasty corporate goons. Mm-hmm. I like that. And I get so we got we've got, we've got like uh, the dumb robots with programmers and handlers. Mm. And mm-hmm. you've also got like that gives you a wide variety of like power armor and stuff, which means I can put power armor enemies in the game, which gives me a lot of op- opportunities for power level. Ironically. Mm-hmm. 
um, and also your cells if you want to have like robot equipment and things. I like that. That's fun. Um, what are they called? Not cops. Not providence. Um, what like what do you shout when they arrive? The bots are here. <laughs> Jesus, it's the fuzz. Yeah, that, that sort of thing. The filth, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think we. I think they're rusty. You just call them the rust. The rust. Love it. I quite like. I the love rust it. Here. Yeah. The rust. I don't know about this place. It smells rusty to me. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and like then that. there's like graffiti. You can't trust the rust. Yeah. Yes. I mean, now we need a T-shirt of that. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the one person you can trust? So, like, obviously, there are a lot of normal folks living on this living on this floating island and and ship, uh, but you are you are not friend to most of them. In fact, like, you're more like you're more, you're worth more to sell out to the rust than you are to, as as friends. But who is the one person you can trust? What if there's one of these robots who's like who's built into part of the structure? Yeah, and he's like he he was like the one of the early prototypes and they they mm-hmm. scaled back the AI after that right yeah mm. oh like and sort of clipping yeah kind of and but he got he got he got lost in like the bowels of the city mm-hmm. and then he's he's now running like for a better way of putting it like the thieves guild he he runs a bar he run, yes, he runs yes but like he's he's <laughs> mounted to it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I quite like that. oh and, with and, like, and, a, like the entire building is his mm. sensory and yeah. I can imagine he's like on a overhead track that yes, allows him to absolutely. go only to certain mm-hmm. places within the bar. But there's, I imagine there's like in a, in separate rooms. There's still those, those tracks run through the doors, so you yeah. can send an arm off and go and get another bottle and reel it back in. <laughs> yes, oh, all the bartenders are him. Mm, every single thing in there is just his arms doing other things. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, All <laughs> same, Jackie Bolts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I want him to be called Alfie. Alfie, I, I like that, and I, I think it could be like a um, augmented life like, form, intellectual like, entity. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was stand for something. Um, and actually, he was he he was part he's part of the Four Life Corporation, part of the Four Life model. Mm. Um, but but the um, the F and the I were pretty the wrong way around. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it it looks like Alfie now. Yeah, okay, Alfie. And Alfie is a. Alfie is the is the underground's worst kept secret. I like to think, and like like the corporation tolerates his existence. Uh, maybe, maybe they have a backdoor into his programming or something. But like he is, he's not not certainly not like the head of your outlaws, but um, no, but a useful contact to have like a fence. Maybe he's just a just a tricky robot. Like they they they've destroyed him once, and he just restored himself from backups. Oh, that's not, well, yeah, he's okay. got so many different arms and things that I think that, like, unless you got every single part of him, yeah, like he, you can't get rid of him without burning the city to the ground. He's just Alfie annoying. mastered Alfie mastered the principle of distributed intelligence. Yes. So every every arm is slightly Alfie, and mm-hmm. they realize that the best thing to do is just let it get on with itself mm. and hope it doesn't evolve. Just hope it corrupts. Rather than trying to fight it, yeah, they're letting it break. Okay, I like that. It's fun. I like that. Um, and then finally, who are we looking to screw over? So obviously Providence Inc. Yep. But I'd like to get someone, I'd like to get an NPC or someone slightly more uh, forward, someone more immediate. Yeah, who's like the head person of this colony or like the foreman here? Oh, I like that it's run by a, like th- this part is run by a foreman, not yeah, yeah, yeah. not like not the, the, the head of the corporation is somewhere else. They, oh, yeah, right. the, head, the head of the corporation is not going to show up in this game. Well, they might do, but yeah. like on a screen. Yes, certainly not down here in a hazmat no. suit. The head of the corporation will be involved. The head of the corporation will be informed of the events <laughs> of this campaign during their morning briefing. Yes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, depending on how well it goes. So, like a foreman, I like the idea of a foreman. I like the idea of like maybe someone who um, he like he has his he makes the robots into really like canid bestial like strange uh, hunting style things mm. so like he, like he does his own modifications oh, he could also be the programmer like he could be the person who coded Alfie yeah okay that works that's a nice idea yeah okay and his name I, I kind of have something like kind of cockney sounding in my head but fancy cockney Vince 
Vincent. No, you see, I was thinking like Lysarin Groach. Oh, Christopher. Christopher, well done. Thank you. I'm very good at names. Lysarin. Oh, this is going to be a hard one to spell. As soon as I'm making it up. Lysarin Groach. Groach oh, is such a oh, indicative oh, can, name feel, of the setting. I can feel Lysarin's, I can feel Lysarin's voice bubbling up in my throat. <laughs> There we are. Always a never seen without a bright yellow hard hat covered in blood and oil. <laughs> uh, he's like, like, like he's, he's never washed his, his, his boy's boiler suit, no. his overalls. His horrible yeah. manky boat. Just manky slightly, boat. slightly puffy face, I'm imagining. You know, that sort of swollen human. I imagine, like, imagine, imagine he's, he's off his, off his um, face on a wide variety of narcotics. He's <laughs> just huffing and light spirit. And, like, well, well like, he's, he's, um, maybe, maybe he's drinking the Leviathan blood. Like, he's drinking jet fuel. It can work like unobtainium down there, you know? It's fine. <laughs> it's it's always this, got a bag and huff and glue. And this, <laughs> what I'm rapidly realising is just dishonoured. There's an element of that. There's an element of dishonoured in it, certainly. But we'll be fine. <laughs> it's got rust in it. I like dishonored. Uh, what I'd like you to do now is note down your your recovery powers. Your recovery power is your big heal. Um, all, all you need to do is write down desperate measures. And because you are a uh, uh, criminals outlaws, uh, when you make a recover action, instead of normal stamina recovery, you heal fifteen and pick one. Stamina is like the best way to describe stamina is like the reach. It's like the armor bar in Halo. If that, if that helps anyone. Yeah, it's te- they're temporary uh, hit points that, that get blown off before you start discarding cards out of your deck, which is your actual like health yeah. bar, as it were. Yeah. You, so you want to keep your stamina up. Uh, you can either make an immediate escape move as you run away without getting harmed, or mark the area you are currently occupying as dangerous too until the end of the battle as you set the room on fire. <laughs> Both of these are good. Now... Now we've done that. The next part is going to be a bit less um, individual. What you're going to do now is pick out some roles. So your roles are, as Chris was saying earlier, very close to your classes. Your um, there are five roles to pick from. You can you can play the same role as someone else if you'd like. That's absolutely fine. Uh, but I am going to uh, I'm going to encourage you to pick separate ones uh, unless you've got a really cool idea. So the roles that we have available are the brawler, who's a frontline fighter, a glutton for punishment. The Deadeye, a long-range damage dealer, a glass cannon. The Protector, combat healer and support operative. The Striker, up-close damage dealer with a glass jaw. And the Warden, battlefield controller and tank. Hmm. It's one of the things I really like about making characters in this is that I keep on going, oh, I could play a brawler and do this, or a tank and do this. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of different stuff you can you can mess about with, which is quite fun. Oh, yeah. All right, Ryan, you're going protector, right? I mean, I'm leaning towards it. <laughs> I'm very much leaning towards protector. I mean, you do you. Uh huh. I'm thinking. You know what you're about. I'm 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 tending towards brawler at the moment. Yeah. How could we squeeze magical girl into the setting? Is that is that maybe crowbarring? And we and we should just develop a different character. Maybe she could have a crowbar. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Chris, brawler, right? Yes, I'm thinking brawler. Okay. Okay. So, yes. Uh, and Amelia? Uh, I'm thinking striker. Solid. And Ryan? I'll do protector. Solid. <laughs> you know what? It's, it's good to have someone in there who isn't just about harming things. Mm-hmm. Um, so, please take a look through at your, your character sheet. Um, so, the, the character pages you've got there. Um, there's some rough ideas for concepts which might work. Uh, or, 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 or sort of give you uh, inspiration. Um, the, you'll need to note down your proficiencies, uh, which uh, make you better at those actions, and your stamina as well, which is which is how much you st- how much stamina you start with, and therefore how much you can lose. Uh, so now you need to note down your boosts because we're not going to play a game with these characters. Um, and then you choose one power from the I think there's four four or five powers for each class uh, for each uh, role that you pick from. Yeah, I think I've got myself a brawler concept and power. All right, talk me through it. So I'm thinking a brawler with, I like those odds, which means that when I'm outnumbered, mm-hmm. when I'm surrounded, um, I actually get better at fighting. Mm. Um, and I'm thinking a the character himself is primarily a vandal. Okay. Oh, actually, sorry. I'm really sorry. We didn't, um, we didn't answer the most important question. What is your crime? 
Yeah. Oh. Well, I can rewind oh, a little bit and do that now. Yes, mm-hmm. let's do that now. Uh, but we'll we'll keep that in mind. So, what what crime did you do? Is it the same as everyone? Did you all do the same crime? Did did, did a job go disastrously wrong, or have you been all incarcerated for separate things? I quite like the idea that we've all got our own personal crimes. Hmm. Okay. But, um, but you know each other. We know each other from the bar. Back. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think I think my my, my character was um, arrested for vandalism, not just like you know the odd tag. But mm-hmm. like smashing, like punch through, a smashing wall. screens, like extended <laughs> anti corp tagging, that sort of stuff. Right, I see. So there's a, there's a level of artistry in it. Yeah, right? well, I'm, I'm thinking like a brawler with two weapons, one with a weapon in each hand, a crowbar in one and a spray can in the other. Oh man, I love the idea of a spray can as a weapon. That's super cool. It's, it's just like a hyper violent Mark Echoes getting up. Oh, that's nice. Okay, Mark Echoes putting down. Yes, <laughs> the system. Hey. Oh, there you go. Okay, Amelia, what was your crime? Um, I think um, strategically taking out uh, some of these robots. Mm. Uh-huh. Property damage. Mm-hmm. Harsh. Their AI. Well, that's, that's, that's the thing. Like the, the robots we've got are idiots. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, the robots we've they got on there are fine to kill. So they get uh, for being Robocops. Yeah, <laughs> Lit- quite literal Robocops. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's property damage. Um, with, and, 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 and is that like, um, is that for fun? Are, are you stealing the parts? Why robots? Um, oh, just because they're nuisances and the fewer of them there are, the less likely for me to get caught doing other things. Please, please, all of you play horrible, disagreeable people as I do right. <laughs> I mean, that's well, just, just kind of how this goes, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Everyone, crime, is, yeah. everyone is terrible, and then Ryan's like, I'm just yeah. here to help. Lovely. Um, but on, the, on, on, that, on that subject, um, Ryan, what was your crime? So my crime was it loving too much? My crime <laughs> is technically in the system, aiding and abetting. Okay. Uh, but literally, it was uh, saving an innocent person uh, that was marked as a guilty person uh, uh, okay, cool. from the rest. Uh, Just top, Ryan. top shelf fantastic. I love that. Uh, <laughs> what a it's guy. so good. It's so good. <laughs> Well, can I just say, I really have been enjoying this Session Zero. And I know, Amelia, you were absolutely right that this game is entirely my jam. It was. I, Grant reached out to me and I was like, oh, this is this is Ryan. This is, <laughs> this is a Ryan game. <laughs> what do you mean? Collaborative world building, character creation, everything's wrapped into one, unique mechanics right away. Oh. Yep. Yep. Good stuff. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Kickstarter for this game is already done and over with, but we hope you don't mind us having fun with Grant and Chris again for Unbound. Um, In the next episode, we get to finish our characters and the world, and we really go into a lot of interesting directions. Uh, Things get very crazy. Yeah. Um, I will say that I know that as part of the Kickstarter, they were planning on funding some extra copies of this one unlike their first one so hopefully you'll be able to get it on their website at least Mm -hmm. um i do think you can get the pdf there now already um Mm -hmm. but the printed copy of the book i think will be on their website uh as for calls to action this time around go vote if you haven't yet um if you listened to the whole episode and then we're gonna go vote why hurry you're running (laughs) out of time so little time i don't even know if this will be out in time maybe you'll listen to it while you're in line at the polling place i don't know that's that's very it's likely too late to do that uh since life has made getting this episode out into your ears a little bit difficult and you know what? If you are in line listening to this right now and it's past 8 p.m., you can stay in stay line. Stay in line. Stay in line. Vote. <laughs> Do it. We should we should move on with this call to action so that we can get this episode out so people have time to vote. It all. all right. We'll do that. <laughs> Well, another thing to keep in mind is to check out my live streamed campaign that begins the first actual play session on Friday, November 13th. Um, I can't promise spooky stuff yet, uh, foreshadowing, but I can promise it'll be a great time. Uh, We've got some uh, voices from the A Horror Borealis podcast family um, and some fans from that community as my players. 
Um, and we're ready to dive deep into my magical girl nonsense. Um, I think we're fighting against capitalism or something. Nice. Uh, it's it's unclear right now, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, you, so you can check that out at twitch.chimera.games. Um, you can also check out the other campaign uh, using Chimera on the Utopia channel at capeandblade.chimera.games. Uh, both are phenomenal and both are worth uh, checking out, in my opinion. Speaking of cool things you can do, uh, leaving reviews is near the top of the list of cool things to do. Absolutely. Uh, right now we are in need of them. We are currently all out of reviews to read, dear listeners. No. And we we really need them right now, more, more than more. ever. More than ever. <laughs> more than ever, we need them. <laughs> um, if you want to help us out tremendously, please consider leaving a rating or review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Podcast Attic, Stitcher, a little note on your kitchen counter that, that you then take a picture of and send to us on Twitter. <laughs> However you want to do it. Um, we love when you leave us a review. We like to read them on the air. It's our way of saying thank you directly to you. Mm -hmm. um, so you can head to the links in our show notes and please send us one. Absolutely. Uh, with all of that out of the way, thanks for sticking with us during all of this. It means a lot to both of us. Uh, we will be back next week with more from Chris and Grant. Until then, take care of yourselves breathe, stretch every now and then, and try to take things easy. Um, until next time, have a good week, everybody. Bye. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. 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 Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like System Mastery. System Mastery is a delightful stroll through the history of role-playing games. Except the games are terrible, and the hosts are real jerks about everything. Join hosts Jeff and John as they explore the weirdest games ever made to talk about what worked, what went wrong, and which silver hawk was the best? It was Hot Wing. Don't even add us. Find their shows at systemmasterypodcast.com or oneshotpodcast.com. Finally.